This game today from the Southwest Conference. The referee is Joe Thomas from Wolverton, Oklahoma. Bill Anger, Don Brown, Bob Baker, Ron Underwood, and Bo Hicks. Bobby Hahn, number 13, will kick off for Arkansas. Kelvin Epp, Edwin Simmons, back deep for the Texas Longhorns. This is the shootout. Kelvin Epp. And at the 15-yard line is where Texas will have it. All right, now let's set offensively this Texas team. Rob Morrishow, the quarterback, nicknamed Opie, is 4-0 and oh as a starter. He's thrown no interceptions. And Edwin Simmons, we talked about him in the pregame show, two straight 100-yard days, a veteran offensive line. Doug Dawson, the All-American guard, his assets are his intelligence and his competitive spirit. So the Longhorns will set it up at the 15-yard line. Simmons, Terry Orr starting at fullback. That's Bobby Mitchell, 46, the tight end, jumping around. The fullback, Orr. Terry Orr for a yard, and that's all. And now the Arkansas defense, the defensive line, Ron Perot. He stands six foot eight. He's replacing the All-American Billy Ray Smith and outstanding middle linebacker in Burt Zinneman. He's from the Little Rock area. And his teammate number 49, Milton Fields, he's the other linebacker. They've played together for seven years. They know each other very, very well. It's second down, nine. Edwin Simmons. The man we just highlighted, Ron Perot, was there. Greg Laster. And in two plays now, Texas hasn't done anything. It's now going to make up third down and nine. The secondary for Arkansas, very young. They play three sophomores. There is there is some concern there. Greg Laster, the, the free safety or strong safety, is probably their best player. Mark Lee is the junior back there. He was a linebacker a year ago, a rover this year. Orr is out. Urban Davis comes in. Third down and nine. Orshell. And a completion. Very well thrown. Bill Boy Bryant, a junior from Dublin, Texas, and that's a first down. Rob Morrishell gets better each week. From the end zone, take a look at Rob Morrishell. Remember, it's third and eight, and Rob Morrishell is a very good runner as well as a thrower. He's thrown no interceptions this year. He's putting pressure on Arkansas's corners. He, there, he decides to throw the ball to number 80, Bill Boy Bryant, who catches the ball before going out of bounds for the first down. Keeps the drive alive. 17-yard pickup to the 33-yard line. Remarkably, none of the Texas quarterbacks this year have thrown an interception. Now, Mike Luck and Terry Orr in the backfield. This is Orr. And Orr out to the 38. Burt Cinnamon, number 48, the middle linebacker. Who they feel is a strong all-conference prospect last year making the second team. Early in the game here, Arkansas's defense feels they can't really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this tremendous offensive line of Texas. Don Lindsay, their defensive coordinator, feels they have to mix it up, give them as many different looks as they can, and try to throw them off rhythm. Second down, five for the Longhorns. Bryant and Brent Duhon split out for Texas. This is Luck. Mike Luck, a senior from Houston. Rugged performer, number 26, Milton Fields, 49, making the stop for Arkansas. Luck does not have the burning speed, but a rugged performer. And a very good receiver. He had a big catch last week against Oklahoma. He is the classic utility back, but he has a lot of good things for their offense. It's going to bring up just short of a first down. They may be a half yard short. And right now we have a delay in the game as Morshell goes to the sideline. Here's the score. Utah and Wyoming. The Utes with the lead. We're going to measure to see if that was the first down. Rob Morshell, who took over as the starting quarterback when Todd Dodge was hurt before the first game of the year. They are short. Brett Akers from Blytheville, Arkansas. He played at Arkansas. And on the other side, Lou Holtz. Lou, who coached at North Carolina State, the New York Jets, before coming to Arkansas. Both of them arriving in the Southwest Conference the same year. And Lou Holtz is quite a wit. He's a lot of fun to be around. Third down, less than a yard. 
two tight ends, Mitchell and Alvin Jenkins, 81, have come in for Texas. Three back offense. Sneak by Marshall. First down, Milton Fields made the tackle. Nothing fancy here. Power football by this Texas offense. Remember, they get you in third and one. They're going to be tough. They have got an all-American right guard in Doug Dawson. Their center, David Jones, is filling in for injured uh, Mike Ruther. However, Rob Morrishow, remember, he was a punt returner one time. He's a fine runner. He just followed his center for a, for a first down. But if they get you in third and a half a yard, they're going to convert most first downs. Arkansas brings in Mike Castleberry at linebacker. Luck and Orr in the backfield behind Morrishow. This is Luck. reaction by the Razorbacks that time. Nick Miller, 47, who, by the way, is playing only his second game at defensive end, along with Rodney Beecham, make the tackle. This is a magnificent setting for college football. You could not buy a ticket for this place if you knew the president of the college. In fact, it's been sold out since 1977. Second down, virtually 10 to go. Duhon couldn't quite, and it brings up third down. On both long down situations, we've seen Texas roll out. They set this up by running some inside plays. They fake to the tailback this time. Rod Moore show one, once more gets out to the perimeter. The ball is a little bit high, but number seven, Brent Duhan, had an opportunity to catch this ball. Again, Morrishell on the perimeter. The ball is high. Duhon, most times, will make that catch. This time, he did not. Brent Duhon. 89 passes his senior year in high school. Third down, 10. Lockenor, the setback. That's Bill Boy Bryant, the intended receiver. Gatson defending. He had a lot of time to throw the football. Texas is not a third and ten football team, though. They are a third and one, third and two football team. So the Longhorns will have to kick, and they have a kicker who has just been superb. John Telchik. He is second in the conference in average, first in net yardage, averaging 42.6 a kick. And going back, Bobby Joe Edmonds, number 41. As you can see, kicking without the shoe or the sock. Beautiful kick. And it will go in for the touchback. And Arkansas, after that 54-yard kick, will set it up at the 20-yard line. The Razorbacks have stopped the horns. They're going to get the football. Arkansas at the 20-yard line. Let's set offensively the Razorbacks. First, the backs and the receivers. Quarterback Brad Taylor, we talked about him a little earlier. Lou Holt said he's the best quarterback he's ever been around. He has a possession-type receiver, Mark Mitzler. He has 13 catches. He has the sure hands. But here's the offensive line, and Lou Holt feels this is the key to the game. They have to run inside. Andy Upchurch, the center, is very key. But maybe their best lineman's 56. Marcus Elliott, he's a junior from right here in Little Rock. So the Razorbacks... Able to hold. They have the ball for the first time with 11 minutes to go in the first quarter. Carl Miller and Bobby Joe Edmonds behind Brad Taylor, the quarterback. This is Miller. Carl Miller, a sophomore from Pine Bluff, gets a yard, maybe two. Eric Holly. And speaking of Holly, let's look at that Texas defense. Eric Holly is just playing outstanding defense for the Longhorns. Alongside him, number 99, Tony DeGreat is an art education major. He's like trying to block an oak tree. And Jeff Whiting, he is kind of the, the free spirit on this Texas football team. And here's the defensive backs, the number one rated defensive backs in the country. Mossy Cade playing All-American football. And Jerry Gray, the free safety, he's playing very well too. Second down, eight yards to go. Bobby Joe Edmonds met for maybe a yard. Haynes, Holly made the stop. Now, Pat, one thing 
that Lou Holtz wants to do is establish a running game. Boy, it's going to be tough. Nobody's done it yet. We saw a very good Oklahoma team last week with the perhaps departed Marcus Dupree only pick up 50 yards. And Marcus only at 50 yards. This Texas defense is the best rated defense in the country. They've stopped a lot of good uh, running attacks. They've allowed only 84 yards a game. Third down and eight. Mitzler goes in motion. Taylor with lots of time. A catch by Mitzler. First down. We talked about how Lou Holtz likes to probe a defense early in the game. An investment, he calls it. What do you do? You send Mark Mistler in motion. He's investing some things for right now, too, as he runs a crossing route. A very good call against man-to-man -man defense. Mark Mistler was in motion. He cut back across the field. That's a very difficult pattern to cover against man-to-man -man pass defense. This is what Lou Holtz wanted, is to get that initial first down, get the crowd into the game, get something successfully going. First down the 34. Bobby Joe Evans. 60, the middle linebacker for the Longhorns there. Pick up a three. It'll be second and seven. Gary, you mentioned the crowd, and this is psychological ploy that Lou Holtz wants to employ this afternoon. He feels if he can get a couple of first downs early in the ball game, this home crowd will make it seem like it's a touchdown, creating some doubt, perhaps, in this Texas defense. Remember, this defense has been so successful, a first down against them is almost like six points. Ty Allard is coming at linebacker, replacing June James on the right side for the Longhorn. Second and seven. Mitzler in motion. game like this can be infectious. One more look at Brad Taylor as he sprints out to his left. Now this is a very difficult throw to your left, but he throws it beautifully right over the defensive back, Fred Acorn, who had Missler covered pretty well. Watch how well Missler is covered, but Acorn doesn't see the ball until it's too late. Missler catches it for a big catch and a first down. Boy, there's those sure hands. 21-yard completion. Missler with two catches, 15 for the air. First down at the 42. Edmonds and Eric Holly is there. There's a penalty flag. 93, Eric Holly out of Austin was there instantly. So we'll determine now what this penalty is all about. The referee is Joe Thomas, illegal procedure against Arkansas. They actually lost four yards on that play, so let's see what the option will be, what Texas will elect to do. Illegal formation, offense, decline, second down. That's what we suspected because they had the loss. Second down now and 14. June James comes back in at linebacker. Ty Allert will leave. Mitzler, Keith Kidd split out for the Razorbacks. Franklin, the tight end out of Houston. Going to bring up a third down. They're still about seven yards short. Lou Holtz said what he did early in the football game is very important. Now, they've had a great deal of success early, early in this first series throwing the football. But the key has been the protection that Brad Taylor has had. It's, a, it's allowed him to complete the ball to Franklin, his tight end, and two times to Mark Missler, his flanker. A quick release of Taylor. As Lou Holtz said, we have a chance with him. Third and seven. Kid, he's out of bounds. Keith Kid out of bounds. Mosty K defending for Texas. Wyoming and Utah are meeting out west. Let's go to New York now for an NCAA report. Here's Brent Musburger. Gary, it's a WAC conference game, and the Utes have struck first. Here is quarterback Mark Stevens going to wide receiver Danny Huey. And with this 50-yard touchdown, it is 7-0. Let's go back to Gary and Pat. Thank you, Brent. Arkansas to kick. Brad Taylor, who leads the Southwest Conference, trying to keep it in play. Does he? Too long for the touchback. That's a 40-yard kick. At the 20-yard line, Texas has it for the second time. There's no score. The horns and hogs. 
Buckler, number 16. He is setting up Lou Holt's investment in the future. In the second and third quarter, the Sheep should see some more offense from Brad Taylor. He's hit three or four passes thus far. First down at the 20 for the Longhorn. That's Bobby Mitchell, the tight end, moving around. Terry Orr, Edwin Simmons in the backfield. This is Simmons. Bobby King, number 90 from McClellan High School in Little Rock was there. He's a sophomore. One of the 11 starting sophomores for Arkansas. A loss on the play, second and 11. This Arkansas defense has gotten better each week, and it's been surprising here early in the ball game how that the Texas offense, even though they're bigger up front, have not been able to run the football effectively. Lou Holt says you better get used to this team. It's our team for the next three years, a young team. the last two plays. We talked about the line play, the hitting that's going on up front. This is an emotional football game. There's tremendous penetration there by the Arkansas defense. No room for Terry Orr to pick a hole. Third down. Now remember on the first series they had a third down. Marshall was able to complete the pass. Third and ten. It was third and eight on that one. Ron Perot may have saved a first down. Ron Perot from Hearst, Texas. Now, he's been overshadowed by Billy Ray Smith the last few years, but you're going to see some of the size and agility of this man. Remember, he is 6'8", 254 pounds, but he still finds a way to fight off a block and put the stop on Rob Morshaw, as you mentioned, saving a first down. From Hearst, Texas, he's been favoring a knee at off-season knee surgery as Kelchick back to kick the last time a 54-yarder. Big rush! They're going to have Ruffy the kicker. Bobby Joe Edmonds has the ball, and Texas has him. They went for the block, and they're going to have a penalty, and Texas will maintain the football. Scott Shaleen, we believe, was the man that went crashing through. We'll check it. A look from the ground as John Telsher tries to get the ball off. You're going to see 26 come right into your screen. Shaleen is there. It's clearly into him after the ball is gone. It's a penalty, and Texas is going to keep possession. Well, they thought they could block one. However, the man they really wanted to send was Nathan Jones. But Jones has a hamstring problem, and so Shalane took over the job, and he did it too well. Personal five, up the kicker, but automatic first down. That's really a shame, too, because Arkansas would have had pretty good field position there. Unbeaten West Virginia against Virginia Tech and Morgantown. Okay, and Don Neelan's really doing a great job of the Mountaineers. Jeff Hostiller, he's played remarkably well this year. So Texas will now have it first down at their own 39-yard line. A very costly mistake by Arkansas. Luck or the running back behind Morshell and a penalty flag. He still had 14 seconds on the clock to get the playoff. Let's see what this is about. Offside. Now, interestingly enough, that will be called on a dead ball, and Texas will be assessed five yards. Encroachment, offense, first down. If you move, you don't even have to snap that ball. They can whistle you down on it. The offense is not offside. They call it encroachment. A little change in the NCAA rules this year. Utah leading the Cowboys by 14. First and 15 now for Texas. Church at the point where he is. Ron Perot was one of those. Also Burt Zinneman. It'll bring up now second down. Still a long ways to go. Second and 11. Too high. Bill Boy Bryant split out for the Longhorn. A 
nice little defensive play by the Arkansas secondary. A little trickery. They faked the ball there to Billboy Bryant on the end around. Actually, Brent Duhon was open. The ball was thrown a little bit late, and you can see Bobby Mitchell underneath him there was open, but the play by Kevin Wyatt, number seven, he was not fooled and knocked the ball away from Duhon. One of three sophomores in the secondary. His daddy was a pitcher in Major League Baseball, you might recall, John Wyatt. Third down, 11. Horschel to the 45. He's going to be short of the first down. Bert Zinneman stopped him about a yard short. Raven Caldwell was also there. All right, we saw that West Virginia touchdown a moment ago. Let's have a highlight on it. Here is Brent Musburger in New York. Gary, it was an impressive drive by the Mountaineers. Jeff Hostetler took it the remaining yard, but the Mountaineers appear to be awesome today. Let's go back to Gary and Pat. Brent, they are a fine football team. West Virginia, and we have two good ones locked up here. The kick will be Telshik on fourth down, and going back will be Bobby Joe Edmonds. Not an exceptionally good kick. Edmonds will let it hit. Gets a Texas roll down to the 12. At the 12. That's a 42-yard kick. He got it right on the bounce. No score from Little Rock. Texas is the number one ranked team defensively in the country, and this shows you statistically what they're doing. Allowing only 84 yards a game on the ground. 95 passing. The amazing thing about the passing, they're only allowing a 30%, a 37% completion rate against that secondary. Arkansas having some success offensively, especially in their last game against TCU. But now, not with a field position. There's the 12, first down. Mitzler in motion. Bobby Joe Edmonds gets a couple of yards. It'll bring up second at eight. Ed Williams, number 83. He's considered to be the fastest defensive lineman for the Longhorns. One of the captains out of Odessa. Second down, let's make it nine. Texas has been playing a lot of people, both offensively and defensively. They're getting into the heart of the schedule now. It'll be interesting to see if they continue to do that. 22 to go, first quarter. No score. The pitch to Edmonds. He's to the 14-yard line. It'll bring up third down and still seven. Lang, Acorn on the tackle. A sellout crowd here at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. The shootout, they call this. The 65th meeting between Texas and Arkansas. Thus far, both teams kind of testing each other. And it's nothing, nothing as Arkansas now has it third down eight from their own 14. A quick kick. Brad Taylor with a quick kick. And that will be downed at the 32-yard line. That was something that Lou Holtz indicated he would do, and he did it. He is full of surprises, Lou Holtz is. And again, we, talk, we keep talking about this investment in the future. Perhaps that was something else we may see a little bit more of. 54-yard quick kick. That's something that you don't see a lot in college football anymore. The Oklahoma team used to do it. Just short of the 32 is where Texas will have it. The Longhorns with 2.39 left in this first quarter will have Hayes and Epps now at the wide receivers. Boy, this Utah team is rolling, aren't they? Ronnie Robinson has come in for the first time at fullback, along with Mike Luck for Fred Aker's team. This is Luck. And they are popping people down there. They'll give him a yard, and that's all. Gerald Jones, 76, was in there leading a charge for Arkansas. Texas is not getting anything on first down. Remember, they've been in a lot of second down and longs and third down and long situations. They do not like that. Their average yards to go, actually, on third down thus far in the game has been eight yards. That's too much for them. So they come to a second and nine. Walker, John Walker's in, along with Robinson in the backfield. who had an 80-yard touchdown catch against Auburn, almost got another one. 
This play was set up a little earlier in the game when Rob Morshell rolled to his left and threw some shorter routes. This time, Kelvin Elps, Elps ran a down and out. He was open. The ball was underthrown. Epps couldn't hang on to it. We might mention Epps got that pass from Rick McIver, but it was underthrown in the Auburn game. This time, Morshell didn't get it done. It's third and nine. It's becoming very familiar here in the first quarter. Third and nine. That's what you're saying, Pat. It's too much to do. This is a control football team. They don't like to be in this situation. And that's where they are now, third and nine. Epps again. He got it, and that's a first down catch. 19-yard completion to the Arkansas 48-yard line. This time it is third and nine, but they come up with a big completion and Rob Warshell drops straight back in the pocket. We've seen him roll out. This time he's back in the pocket, gets very good protection. Kelvin Epps, who was open earlier on the previous play, and watch the block, blocking of number 66, Doug Dawson. He's the All-American center. This is the key, giving your quarterback the time to throw the football. And he certainly did that. Dawson playing a guard. His regular starting center not alongside him, and Mike Ruther did not make the trip. First down. to the 41 of Arkansas. Mark Lee, 22, made the stop. We're going to bring up second down and a long four to go. John Walker had trouble hanging on to the football last week against Oklahoma. Lost his starting job to Simmons. Well, he had two fumbles, and this has really been the only problem that the Texas offense has had thus far this season. They fumbled the ball 11 times. That's nearly three a game. They've lost six of those, but they've been, they've been having trouble holding on to the football. That last play, by the way, was the longest gain that Texas has made on first down this day. That was a six-yard pickup. Second and four. Barry, number 70, from Higginsville, Missouri, who last year was a tight end for Arkansas. He's credited with the tackle. And it's going to be third down and still almost four yards to go. I think most people thought that Texas could run right at Arkansas, but they've done a good job against the rush. 42 seconds, the clock moving here in the first quarter remaining. was an audible by Rob Morshell. He saw man-to-man -man coverage. He audible. The back shifted. He gets back again. Very good protection by his offensive line. Gives him a chance to try to take advantage of it. Again, the ball pretty well thrown. Russell Hayes had an opportunity to catch the ball. His defender was beaten. He just can't quite hang on. So Texas will kick. Telshik will boot it. Averaging 48 yards in two previous efforts. Bobby Joe is back for Arkansas. may be able to keep it in play. That will be the two, the three-yard line, a 39-yard punt, a very fine job location-wise by Pelcher. No score, 14 seconds remaining in our initial quarter. We have a surprising change here. The new quarterback is Scott Reed for Arkansas. The Razorbacks at the three, and Reed is going to try to move it out there on the sneak. And he got the maneuvering room. Tony Edwards, 63, made the stop. Reed is a very fine option quarterback. Maybe they feel that he'll protect the ball in that very precarious situation. This is a tough position to put him into. Well, Reed hasn't even thrown a pass this year. He's out of Jacksonville, Arkansas, a senior. Brad Taylor will tell you that he has really helped him this year. That's the end of our first quarter. Arkansas will have a second down four when we start quarter number two. No score. No score in a very, very important game in the Southwest Conference. But one of these teams hopes will lead to the Cotton Bowl. Here's Reed, who's still in a quarterback on the second and four, trying to inch it forward. Got across the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and still a couple of yards. Now, Edwin Simmons, the freshman sensation, has hurt his left knee. That is not the knee that he had difficulty with at the start of the year. He's in the locker room. They're looking at it. We'll update his status at a later time. 
Arkansas, third down two, a long two. Reed still in at quarterback. And they're not going to get the first down. That's Derek Thomas, number 40. Tony Edwards, 63, and the Horns are holding. Arkansas is going to have to kick. What did they have? They started with a 20, the 16, and the three-yard line. Three-yard line. It's been a game of field position for Arkansas. They haven't had an opportunity, really, the last two possessions to take advantage of Brad Taylor's right arm. So Reed is out, and coming in will be Taylor to kick. And Jitter Fields, a man that concerns Blue Hope so much, is back to receive the punt. Oh, did Taylor hit it. Beautiful kick. Fields from his own 39. And he advances to the 46. 51-yard kick, an 8-yard return. Well, tomorrow's an NFL doubleheader day on CBS, featuring two excellent NFC Western Division matchups in the first game. Many of you will see the San Francisco 49ers against the New Orleans Saints flying high after last week's win over the Falcons. And in the doubleheader game, it'll be the Atlanta Falcons against the Los Angeles Rams, who are tied with the 49ers and the Saints for the division lead. Other regional action, all starting with the NFL today. Those Rams keep winning without me. Yeah, what a surprise. Stopped by Burt Zinneman, the middle linebacker. His forward progress into the Arkansas end of the field. We're seeing what Texas likes to do, though. They like to pick up five, six yards with a fullback off tackle on first down. And if they don't pick up a, a first down, they'll punt the ball, make you go 80 or 90 yards against the number one rated defense in the country, waiting for a break, waiting for the opposing offense to give them an opening where they can come in and score against them. Second down five for the Longhorns. Luck and Orr in the backfield. This is Luck. Luck, the first down, there's a penalty flag. Mike Luck advancing to the 35 of Arkansas. Castleberry with a stop. If that holds, that's a 13-yard gain. Illegal use of the hands against Texas, though, they'll come back. That might have been the reason there was a big hole on the left side for Mike Luck, number 26, in the I formation. A little pitch to his left side, puts him deep in a the, in the formation where he can read the blocks, pick up a hole, and it makes a nice cut in there. But the offensive line of Texas here early now is beginning to gain a little bit of the dominance that we expected. So the penalty brings it back now to the 45, a 10-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty, second down now. 10 yards to go from the 45. Boy, they love their hogs down here in Arkansas. You know those hats were big in Washington, D.C. Remember the Redskins offensive line? They're not big in Los Angeles. I haven't seen too many of them out there. They call themselves the hogs. Second and 10. Bill Boyd Bryant was there and also Duhon and Pat. They were in the same spot when the ball got there. It'll be third and ten now for Texas. Arkansas makes a mass substitution now. They change their entire defensive line. They bring the first team back in. Beecham, King, Perot, check back. Another third and long situation. Bob Morshell will have a third and ten. 12.31 to go. First half of play. There's no score. Morshell has hit two of eight for 36. was Kevin Wyatt, the quarterback fell down. 54 yards. Duhon's second touchdown catch of the year. Jeff Ward to attempt the point after now for the Longhorns. Jeff Ward, 
seven to nothing, Texas. Fred Akers calls Rob Morshaw a typical Texas quarterback. All he knows how to do is win. He may not have the greatest arm. He may not beat you with his legs, but somehow he's going to find a way to beat you, and he does it here. We've seen him overthrow a couple receivers, but this time he's right on the mark to a wide open number seven, Brent Duhon. You saw the receiver, Kevin Wyatt, fall down. There's no one there to stop Duhon from going in for six. So, Brent Duhon and the Texas Longhorns lead it by seven at the 12-22 mark of the second quarter. Texas on the scoreboard. Duhon with the 54-yard touchdown grab. Ward will kick off. Ward, a freshman, hitting that point after. He's 16 for 16 this year. We've seen a lot of freshman kickers. Two of them in this game, and they all have done extremely well. And walk-ons, a lot of walk-ons. Carl Miller back deep for the kickoff. And Miller wisely will not bring that out. Let's go back and pick up how Wyatt lost his footing. Well, this is the human element in college football. No matter how much film you watch, what kind of game plan you have, you can never account for this. Sometimes a defensive back just loses his footing, as you see Kelvin Wyatt on the ground right there, a wide open Brent Duhon. He's got to break in Coach's heart as well as the defensive back. Brent Duhon, a junior out of Port Arthur, Texas. That was his fourth catch of the year and his second touchdown grab. From the 20, Arkansas now playing some catch-up football. Miller in the backfield. Bobby Joe Edmonds in motion. And it's Edmonds. He wanted to make his cut, but he stepped out of bounds. They pick up five, almost six yards. It'll bring up a second down. Brad Taylor back in at quarterback after Scott Reed had run the team in the last series. Here's the in motion. Bobby Joe Edmonds, number 41. He was cleared out, ran underneath his wide receivers. The ball was well thrown for seven yards. Bobby Joe Edmonds started the fall as a wide receiver. They moved him to running back. He's adjusting well. Second down, five. Miller. Miller takes it out of there for a first down run. He's still going. Thirteen yard pickup. Carl Miller, the fullback, his team is playing well offensively. Carl Miller said, we all have to play great. Watch Carl Miller, number 30. Busts up the middle, follows his block. Andy Church, we missed, the Blue Holtz felt he had to run right at the Texas defense, up the gut, to be successful today. And Akers expected him to do that. Carl Miller, whose brother Cleo, now playing the USFL, formerly with the Cleveland Browns. First down. gets the yard on it. Let's go to New York now for an update on Utah, Wyoming. Once again, here's Brent. Gary, I think it's all over between Utah and Wyoming. The first four times the Utes handled the ball, they came away with seven points. And now it's 28 to nothing. Let's go back to Gary and Pat. What an offensive explosion, huh? The Utes of Utah. <laughs> You were doing that call this morning, weren't you? The <laughs> Sioux. Sioux. Yeah, I'll tell you what. These fans love it here. Oh, it's outstanding. Now, Taylor wants a timeout. Brad Taylor did not like what he saw there, so he uses his first timeout. Two remaining in this first half. Arkansas, as we come back, will have a second down nine. They trail by seven. We well, want to take this moment to mention that the Texas Longhorns have voted in a pregame meeting to dedicate their efforts in today's game to the memory of Longhorn assistant coach Glenn Swenson, who died in an auto accident shortly before the team's departure for Little Walk yesterday. He was 57 years old. He'd been a member of the Texas staff since 1970. Our condolences to his family from all of us at CBS. Second down, nine. Taylor to kick. Boy, he zipped that one out there. He's like a gunslinger. He sits back there and he pats the ball and he waits for his receiver to come open. There he is. Very confident young man. They call him the Danville Diamond. 
Danville, Arkansas. Lou, Lou Holtz sang his praises all week. I've really never seen a coach as high on a quarterback as Lou Holtz is on Brad Taylor. Now, Lou Holtz has been around some good ones, but he is very, very happy with his quarterback. Has him for another year as well. That's right. He's four of six now. Third down, nine. Miller and Billy Warren are in the back. and he's not going to drop very many. And we have a penalty flag, I believe, against Texas. Mossy Cade is incensed. Evidently, he made some contact after the play. We talked about how Texas likes to play man-to-man -man defense. You see Mossy Cade there, number three, as he runs across the field. All the defensive backs are running with the receivers. That is what we call man-to-man -man defense. The crossing routes are a good call against that. It was a late hit. As you can see, Missler coming across the field. The ball is thrown out in front of him. But the official's there. The ball is out of his hands. Number three, Mossy Cade comes up and puts a late hit on him. The official calls roughing. Mossy Cade, who was the Southwest Conference Defensive Player of the Week last week. So the personal foul will set it up inside the 45 to the 44, and that really changes the game. They were coming to a fourth down, and now they have a first down. Mitzler and Kitts split out for the Hogs. 11 minutes to go, first half. Miller, Edmonds in the backfield, penalty flags. They're going to stop the play. Wait on the preliminary signal here from Joe Thomas. Illegal procedure. Looks like the center got the ball caught on the turf there. He couldn't get the ball back. Quarterback. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, if you don't wear red, you aren't wearing something emblematic of a Razorback, you're in the minority here. Take one of those home to your kids. Three of them, four of them. How many kids do I have? I lose track sometimes. Except about 5 a.m. when they're all on my bed. First and 15 after the five-yard penalty. Carl Miller. Oh, is he a hard-running fullback? That's a nine-yard pickup. June James, 62, made the tackle. Play a little defensive back and try to tackle Carl Miller, number 30, as he comes right at you on the draw play. Now, this play was set up a little earlier. We've seen Brad Taylor throw the ball with some, some success. What kind of running plays is that set up? The draw play, and that's exactly what Arkansas called. They've had more success already than most teams have had all season long. Second down, six. Looks like the blitz. first down we've seen a little bit of everything here from Lou Holtz we've seen sprint outs we've seen drop backs we've seen draw plays now let's take a look at an option play remember Brad Taylor ran the beer option last year he comes down the line of scrimmage he options the ball pitches it to Bobby Joe Edmonds who puts a nice move there on Mossy Cade and picks up yet another first down against the tech, tough Texas defense he did not have the first down of that little wrinkle he did though First down, number 32. This is Edmonds again. This is my Texas. The top-ranked defense in the country is there, and I mean there. Jeff Lighting, 60. Lighting on the previous play had been blocked. He was the blitzing linebacker. This time, Lighting out of Tulsa, who missed that opening game against Auburn. He went tubing down the river, jumped in. Had, what, 16 stitches in his leg when he hit his leg on a rock. He had a staph infection, but he's back to full strength now. Second down, 12, a loss of two. Taylor, and that's intercepted a penalty flag. Jerry Gray has the intercept, but let's see what the penalty's all about. Jerry Gray coming into this ball game had two interceptions. Interference, illegal use of the hands pushing that time to get the interception. 
Take a look at Brad Taylor. Now, you mentioned, Gary, that he has only thrown one interception come to this game. Lou Holtz has a lot of confidence in this man and wants him to be aggressive with the football. However, he probably should not have thrown this football. You see right there, number two, Jerry Gray. He threw the ball to him, but Gray had pushed off the receiver to make the interception. An eight-yard penalty is what it amounts to, and a first down for Arkansas. Well, they've had two big penalties on this drive. Joe Edmonds only weighs 170, but he's running pretty tough inside. Texas has had those two big penalties defensively and have both been by the defensive backs. Texas defensive backs are so aggressive that you're going to have those kind of penalties against them. We have an isolation on that previous penalty. Jerry Gray, number two, he's in white, the defensive back. He's in the center of your screen. He's going to push off the receiver right there, and that's how he made the interception. Second down, seven for the Razorbacks. A pitch to Billy Warren. Warren, freshman out of Newport, Arkansas. Jeff Lighting there again. Lighting wearing number 60. Remember another guy that wore that number? Tommy Novus. Outstanding All-American for the Longhorn. He wasn't so bad, was he? No, sir. Third down. They lost maybe a yard on that play. Third and eight. Warren comes out, Edmonds replaces him. Can't afford a sack here, takes you out of field goal position. Seven to nothing, Texas. A penalty flag, Taylor throwing to Edmonds. It looked like Texas may have jumped off. Tony DeGreat, 99. Let's see if that's what it is. Boy, Texas is plaguing themselves. Offside, the Longhorns. But an intelligent play by Brad Taylor. We keep singing his praises, but on third and eight, defensive linemen are thinking sack. They know you have to pass. They're anxious to get off the football. If a quarterback goes on a long count in that kind of situation, he has a tendency to draw a defense offsides, and that's exactly what Brad Taylor did. He used his head. James Shebest has come in replacing Mitzler, wide receiver. That will set it up now at the 20-yard line. Third down, three yards to go. Texas entered this game averaging 10 plus penalties. This is their fifth already today. On a third and three, trying to go up the middle, and they did not get the first down. And we're going to have a field goal attempt. Greg Horn will come in. That was Tony DeGreat who made the tackle. So after the penalty, he comes back and holds it. Now, Greg Horn is a freshman out of Russellville, Arkansas. He's hit six of nine, his longest 48 yards, and this time he's going to attempt a 37-yarder. Taylor to hold. It's good. Greg Horn from 37 yards. Arkansas is on the scoreboard. They trail it 7-3 in the shootout. Arkansas has scored. They trailed 7-3. 7.30 left in this first half of play. Bobby Hahn will be kicking off for the Razorbacks. Fields and Epps go back deep. Texas leads this series by a wide margin. But the last two times they've come into the Arkansas and beaten, they went away disappointed. Today they have another battle on their hands. Here is Hahn out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. Fields. Jitter Fields advances out to the 17-yard line. Texas will have it there. Well, we've got an update, Pat. As you look at this first half of play, we understand that Edwin Simmons has showered. He has a knee injury. And he will not return today. And that really takes away Texas' big play potential. We talked about it. He had that ability. But that, they're going to have to be more methodical now. They hope he can play next week against SMU. But he has a sprained left knee. He's showered. He should be on the sidelines. Of course, they've got that big game against the Mustangs. <laughs> oh, yes. In Irving, Texas. That is going to be another shootout. at the 18-yard line. Horschel. Perot was there. He got away from him, and oh, he slides in wisely at the 23-yard line. 
it was interesting that Fred Akers called the pass there, and Rob Borschelt ended up not throwing it. But coming into today's ball game, Texas had 91 first down, first down attempts. They only thrown the ball nine times. Lou Holtz was very much aware of that. And today, they brushed all nine times on first down. North Carolina, that's being played in Raleigh. Maryland, they've lost only one. Boomer Esiason rolling for the Terps. Second down five. Nothing doing for Ronnie Robinson. Robinson, who grew up six blocks away from the Cotton Bowl, stopped dead still that time. Robert Brandon, 89, making the tackle. Third down, a long four. Michigan. The line of scrimmage now, the 24-yard line. Arkansas would like to hold and get some field position. You can hear that enthusiasm at home watching, but it reverberates throughout War Memorial Stadium. Telchik to kick. He hit a beauty. Bobby Joe Edmonds back for the Razorbacks. A flag on the play as he advances to the 26. Mike Brown. Number 27 made the stop for Texas, a 56-yard kick, an 8-yard return, but as we said, a penalty flag back at the 16-yard line. It's going to be clipping against Arkansas. Here's the punt return. You're going to get a, get a look at the clip as Bobby Joe Edmonds comes up, returns the punt right there, blocked him from behind. The official was there to make the call. They'll step it off inside the 10. Clipping on the run back. And saving pain. The first down. Coming up next from Belmont Park, two excellent horse races, the Jockey Club Gold Cup and the Champagne Stakes. Horse racing's all-time leading money winner, John Henry. Slew of gold and play fellow expected to lead a very strong Jockey Club field. I think that Bob Fishman is probably just getting ready for that. Our director, we're glad to have Larry Cavallino with us today in his place. Bring him down here where the football is taken kind of seriously. Did you see the hat he was wearing this morning? Yeah, I sure did. I hope he doesn't take it back to New York with it. First down. Taylor. Kid, there's a penalty at the 20-yard line. We had some pushing. Bossy Cade, the man involved again. Bossy Cade is not having a good day with the official. Cade, many people feel, is the best defensive back in the country out of Eloy, Arizona. And isn't it interesting that Lou Holtz is trying to pick on him? Now, it might be his philosophy to try to pick on their strength. What it is, that's a sixth penalty now against Texas. Cade, oh, oh, he doesn't care if he ever comes back to Little Rock. <laughs> He's from Eloy, Arizona. His brother, Mike, Have a little use is a... Before the ball was thrown, automatic first down. Is a running back at Arizona State. He transferred from Michigan, now playing for the Sun Devils. First down and five now. Check that, first down. Six penalties on Texas. They played a little sloppy. We should also mention that Texas, the last four years they've come off an Oklahoma game, they have not won the next football game the past four seasons. We have a new running back in now for Arkansas, Terry Tatum, a sophomore from Little Rock. Tatum was the number one running back after the spring, but hasn't played much this year. Eric Holly made the stop. Line of scrimmage, just short of the 15. Second down. Almost 10 yards to go. Kid and Mitzler will be split to the bottom of the screen. Joe Edmonds in motion. They fake the reverse and no one is fooled. That's Ty 
Ballard, 48. Ballard, a sophomore out of Houston. That's the first sack, and Ballard, along with June James, have been alternating to that linebacking spot. Texas with a wealth of talent there. Third down now on 18. Billy Warren comes into the backfield for the Razorbacks, who again have miserable field position. It's a long way to go. Taylor on a quarterback draw, and Texas stops it for a two-yard pickup. Ray Woodward, number 70, made the stop. And now Arkansas has to kick the ball with 3.50 left in the first half. Taylor, excellent average this year, 45.9. He's fifth in the nation. He's averaging 48 today. And that's what he faces. It's caught short. Coming up with it on the play is Michael Felt. That's not a very good kick for Taylor, 38-yarder. A fair catch, and Texas now excellent field position at the Arkansas 45-yard line. The Longhorns leading it 7-3, trying to protect that number two ranking. Gary Bender, Pat Hayden. We have a new quarterback for the Texas Longhorns. Todd Dodge will come in, replacing Rob Morshell. Morshell hitting only three of nine passes. A fumble. Arkansas has it. Todd Dodge just came in in his first play. You see this so often when a quarterback comes on early in the game. Remember, he's working with David Jones, a center who is not the normal center. They cannot handle the snap. The ball is never possessed by Todd Dodge, and Bert Zinnemann recovers. A big turnover. Pat, it's always been a problem, hasn't it? You change quarterbacks with a snap. And again, I we said a new center in there as well in David Jones. This is the best field position Arkansas has had to start a drive. This handoff to Carl Miller cuts the yard, and that's all. Ed Williams, 83, making the stop. And Richard Peavy now in a strong safety, 42. He's in place of Craig Curry. There are three minutes left in the half, and Arkansas has two timeouts remaining. The best of football, college football, here on CBS. This battle eventually will send somebody to the Cotton Bowl. You'll see it here, January 2nd. He's going to pay for that. Tony DeGrate, Ray Woodward made the stop. Now, Arkansas switched to the eye this year. They used to use the beer before. That was kind of an indication of the old option game that they used to run a lot of. Well, you still have to be concerned with it because Brad Taylor and the Arkansas offense is still capable of running it. That's another thing you have to prepare for when you're getting ready to play Arkansas and Lou Holtz. Down and eight yards to go. They pick up the blitz. Luther Franklin, that's a first down catch. Ten yard pickup. You mentioned they picked up the blitz, and when you do that, you know you're going to face man to man coverage. Watch the blitz inside. You see the linebackers coming. Good protection for Brad Taylor as he slings another one to his tight end, number 82, Luther Franklin. Enough for the first down. He was defending was Craig Curry. Boy, did he go after him on that play. Craig Curry really hit him. First down at the 44. Derek Thomas gets some hard yards up the middle, just short of the 40. Bert Zinnemann was the guy who pounced on that mishandled snap. He's a senior from right here in Little Rock. This game means a great deal to him. He and Milton Fields, who's also one of their linebackers, played high school football together. They played together for seven years. I bet he's got some friends here in Little Rock enjoying this one. Oh, yeah. Second down. Seven yards to go. Taylor on a spinning play. Seven. 
Mark Lang, 53, on the stop for the Longhorns. Third down, still a long four. And we're going to have a timeout called Arkansas. So they have one left. Well, this is a beautiful area, this Arkansas area. Their campus is located in Fayetteville, and you know about the University of Texas in Austin. Two outstanding institutions. Let's go now and visit the two campuses. Arkansas asks for a timeout. They have a decision to make. You can see the time, you can see the score, and you can at the very side see it's third and four. And Brad Taylor has the information from Lou Holtz. How close do they have to get, do you think, for Greg Horn? He's, what, 35-yard line? That's what Lou Holtz said yesterday. They need to get to the 35. He's comfortable from 45 yards on in. Brad Akers wants to go in with a 7-3 halftime lead. Now, Taylor has somebody out of position. He's got Keith Kidd running over. They've still got time to get the playoff. They're all right. Now in motion goes Missler. He had to avoid the sack, so he got rid of it. Taylor dropped all the way back in the 45. That's one thing they could not allow to have happen, was get down back there. That was a good play by Brad Taylor getting rid of the football. And so with 113, big defensive play that time by Texas. They get it fourth down and four. Greg Horn's going to attempt one, and this would be a long kick. 54 yards, the longest that he's had this year that was successful was 48. Kicking position. football with 107. That ball didn't get up at all. As you mentioned, it was a little bit out of his range. I think he tried to drill it, and sometimes when you do that, you hit it too low. We're going to get another look at it. He hit it low. It's a long kick, a 54-yard attempt. He knew it was blocked right away, never had a chance. But they do get a break. It did bounce down the field, and at the 14 is where Texas will have it. Pressure came right up from the middle to Great and Haynes. Lighting. You could give them all an assist on that one. Got some big paws, those guys. From the 14, Todd Dodge still in a quarterback. Give to John Walker, Burt Zinneman making the tackle. We understand we didn't get to visit the Texas campus on that last breakaway, but we assure you we'll be going to Austin. Nice place. Not a nice place to play if you're an opposing team. They are tough. A nice place to visit if you're neutral, though. Fred Akers, who told us earlier this year, he loves these big games. Second down, four. Todd Dodge, tended for Epps at the 32. Stops the clock with 32 seconds. Perhaps this is the type of situation where you really do miss an Edwin Simmons, a guy even with 32 seconds who has the ability, the capability of running 80 yards for a touchdown once you hand him the ball. This man, number 13, was the quarterback. He had won the job. He injured his left shoulder, not his right shoulder, the Friday before the Auburn game. As an end result, Rob Morshell replaced him at quarterback. Dodge now trying to get back into the picture. A little delay to Walker. John Walker has a first down. Burt Zinneman made the tackle. 13-yard pickup on the play. Give credit also to Greg Gatson. We've got a timeout by Texas. The Longhorns use their first. We talked earlier about how nice it is down there in Austin, the Longhorns campus. So now, as promised, we're going to go down there, and here is the University of Texas. Okay, 7-3. Texas with two timeouts remaining. They have a long ways to go. They're at their own 33-yard line. They lead it 7-3. The difference in this football game was the slip. Wyatt falling down, Duhon catching the touchdown pass. the blitz. Dodge going deep. Epps trying to catch up to it. Epps, the fastest man they have, and he just ran by the secondary. 
saw Todd Dodge, a pretty strong arm by that young man, bouncing back from his injury. Well, he was quite a high school combination with Brent Duhon. He was the first schoolboy in Texas history to pass for over 3,000 yards in a season. That was the first pass that Texas has thrown today on first down. At halftime, Brent and Era scores and highlights. Second down and 10 for the Longhorn. 20 seconds left in the first half. Dodge again deep. Bill Boy Bryant in fine defensive play that time by Charles Washington, number four. Another freshman, one of the many young players in that secondary. And isolated a Bill Boy Bryant, number 80. And remember, it's second and 10 in this situation. He runs down on the field, breaks out, takes a little bit inside. He's opened the ball a little bit late throwing. Thrown, and there's number four, Charles Washington, there to try to put the coverage on Bryant. Washington has two interceptions this year. Third down, 10 now for the Longhorn. straight ahead and so with eight seconds left in this first half of play Pat your thoughts well there's one more timeout here by the Texas team they have one remaining this game so far in the first half Arkansas's offense has been in bad field position most of this first half their defense has played pretty doggone well they've given up one play the touchdown pass to Duhon and actually, that was the first touchdown pass that Arkansas has given up all season long. Texas, meanwhile, I think has looked a little bit lethargic. Maybe that Oklahoma win took a little bit more out than they're, they're leading us to believe. Well, Fred Akers said that he thought it was an insult if his team could not get ready for a big game like this. But let's face it, it was Oklahoma, Arkansas today, SMU next week. That is a very difficult road stretch they've had to face. But you said that was the first touchdown that that secondary has given up. And isn't it remarkable? It was a man that fell down. Like I said, to it. all the preparation you do for a football game, all the, the game film you watch, it's, it's the human element. And that, that's what makes college football interesting as well. But also, remember, Lou Holtz, the, the strategist that he is, has had two weeks to prepare for this football game. Did I say that well? <laughs> what was that, statistician? Is that, is that from Rhodes or where? Well, I've got Mike Swanson, our statistician, next to me. Okay. Fourth and seven, Delsic to kick. Bobby Joe Edmonds will let it hit, and they're going to stay away from that and let the clock expire here in the first half of play. The 65th meeting between these two clubs. What a rivalry it is. And our score at halftime, Texas 7, Arkansas 3. We'll be back with Brandon Error from New York with scores and highlights after this word about an upcoming show on CBS and a message from your local station. Versus Arkansas, an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports is sponsored by Chevrolet. America is on the move and Chevrolet is supplying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge. Southern Pacific, 41,000 people working in 18 industries all across America. And by the investment firm of Smith Barney. They make money the old fashioned way. They earn it. They call this series a game of winners. Two outstanding football traditions. And they have 30 minutes with which to decide the issue here. Texas leading at halftime, 7-3. Lou Holtz and his Arkansas Razorbacks will be receiving. And now let's take a look at some of the key people offensively for the Arkansas Razorbacks. There's Mark Missler. He's caught two balls for 33 yards in the first half. Marcus Elliott, we saw uh, Arkansas have some success running the ball up the middle. That's what Lou Holtz wanted to do. Keith Kidd has not caught a ball in the first half. He's going to have to be a target this second half. Carl Miller will go back to receive the kickoff. And this man, Jeff Ward, will be kicking off. time. These two have tangled either in Austin, Fayetteville, or Little Rock. Today, it's War Memorial Stadium. And Ward hit it effectively. At the 20-yard line is where Arkansas will have it. 
Defensively, let's look at some of the key players now for the Texas Longhorns. The number one rated defense in the country, Jeff Lighting. They've only allowed 1.8 yards per rush for this Arkansas team today. He's anchors the middle. Jerry Gray, we saw a penalty early in the first half against him, but he's played well again, had a number of tackles. And Eric Holley, number 93, the defensive end, big, strong, aggressive player. He's a co-captain. At the 20-yard line, the Razorbacks will have Brad Taylor at quarterback, Bobby Joe Edmonds, and Carl Miller in the backfield. Mitzler will be one of the wideouts along with Keith Kidd. Mitzler in motion. Taylor roll that way, and he hits Mark Mitzler. Pick up a five. Mossy Cade over there, and Mossy Cade will pop you. We heard Era talk at halftime how it's been a game of field position. Arkansas has been backed up mostly in the first half. Actually, in the first half, their average possession, they started on the 18-yard line. So here, this second half, they came out on the 20-yard line. They came up with a first down and completion. They may have something going now. Second down five from the 25. Three men split out. Only one set running back. That's Carl Miller. Taylor taking a lot of time. He gives to Miller. Oh, is he hit? That's June James, 62, out of Kansas City, Missouri, Southeast High School. One of the finest young linebackers the Texas Longhorn staff feels in the country. Third down, still five. So Brad Taylor like to keep this series moving. Their nickel backs this time. Five defensive backs. Mitzler in motion. Taylor's going to give to Edmonds, and that will not be enough for the first down. Out to the 29-yard line. Edwin Simmons, we mentioned he had showered. There he is on the sideline. A very articulate young man out of Hawkins, Texas. Sprained left knee. Now the story is, will he be ready next week for SMU? But even if he is, you have to wonder whether he's going to be at full strength. He's had trouble with the other knee. Now it's his left knee. To kick the ball will be Taylor. Averaging 48 per kick. Jitter fields back deep. He kicks away from fields. Fields at the 30. Oh, as he hit. That's what this shootout's all about. 49-yard punt. Now let's look at the key players offensively for the Texas Longhorns. Rob Morrishow, he had the big touchdown pass to Duhon in the first half. And Doug Dawson, he's given him some excellent protection, giving the quarterbacks time to throw the football. Well, let's see. Is it going to be Morrishow? It is. He will start the second half. There was some speculation as to whether Todd Dodge would continue. But Rob Morrishow's the man right now. Luck and Orr in the backfield. The Longhorns lead it seven to three. On a first down. Beautiful catch, Bill Boy Bryant. Bryant to the 10-yard line. Greg Gatson eventually caught him. 56-yard pass completion. We talk about adjustments. Fred Akers made an adjustment at halftime. He did not throw the ball on first down, but once in the first half, he comes out, opens the second half with a pass, completes it to number 80, Bill Boyd Bryant from Rob Morrishell. But an adjustment. Again, they made a change at halftime, wanted to come in and do something different. What did they do? They come out and surprise you with a pass to open up the second half. That was good coverage by Wyatt. Good concentration by Bill Boyd Bryant, a former high school quarterback. 56 yards, and they're just outside the 10. Morshell with that now has 146 yards passing, 4 of 10. The two of those uh, completions, of the four completions, have been for big plays. He's a winner. Mitcho and Jenkins in, two tight ends. Bryant split out. He's in motion. Morshell back to Luck, to the 5. Luck to the 3. Greg Lasker, the safety. 
with the tackle. Mike Luck into the short side of the field with two tight ends. You're going to watch Casey Smith and Kirkland Junction, the left guard and the left tackle, really seal off every, anybody inside. He gets a kick out block. There is no pursuit there from the inside until number three, Lasker, comes up and trips Luck to prevent him from going in the end zone. But that's a lot of yards to give up down there inside the 10. Second down, two. They can get a first and goal just about at the half yard line. Epps is in motion. Flag penalty. Looked like the tight end on the right hand side fired out prematurely. Boy, those are costly when you get this deep. Second and two on the three yard line. Top of the screen, you're going to see the motion before the ball is snapped. You see Epps in motion there. Right there. There is the motion. Bobby Mitchell who's battling back from a knee problem. Missed the first two games. Was the guy guilty? That's the seventh penalty against Texas. Well, it's amazing, as you said, that the number two ranked team in the nation. Dead ball, encroachment, offense. Yet they're averaging 10, over 10 penalties a game. Fred Aker's aware of that. And now, instead of second and two, it's second and eight. Almost a little over seven anyway, second and long seven. Bryant in motion. Luck. Luck will go out of bounds near the five. That was Milton Fields, 49. They call him the bull because he hits so hard. Again, once more into the short side of the field, the same play they ran and with a little success earlier with Mike Luck. There's not as much protection for him, for Mike Luck. There isn't the hole there because Milton Fields, 49, fills the gap and puts a big lick on Mike Luck. Third down, five. Epps comes back in. He's split out. Epps in motion. Horschel broken up. Luck, the intended receiver. short side of the field twice and this time they roll out to the wide side of the field allowing Rob Morshaw right-handed quarterback to throw to his right he's trying to drill the ball to Mike Luck but as the linebacker number 48 Bert Zinema makes a nice play to prevent the completion boy I guess a nice play it's fourth down this will be a 22 yard field goal attempt by Jeff Ward who's hit three of four previous attempts this season timeout by Arkansas they wanted to think about it a little bit well, Bert Zinneman helped his all-conference selection bid with that play. We'll be back. Big play coming up. Champagne and the Jockey Club coming up next following this game. Here we go. A field goal attempt of 22 yards by the freshman from Austin. enough distance he's got it Jeff Ward now four or five a little shoving in there I think they thought they may have interfered with the kicker Je Jeff Ward got hit very much after he kicked that football through the uprights you're gonna see Jeff Ward they did not call this penalty he gets the ball up plenty of height gives it a little lack there well, the interpretation is, I guess they tried to avoid it. That was Washington, number four, and Robert Brown at 89. But the field goal holds. Texas has a 10-3 lead, 11.58 to go in the third quarter. Let's go to New York now. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame meeting Army in the Meadowlands. And right now, Gary, they are beating Army in the Meadowlands. Here is Steve Berlein, the Irish freshman quarterback buying time moving to the left his tight end breaks free and he's got him at his 14 to nothing Notre Dame let's go back to Gary well we've had a wonderful time here at Little Rock and our local affiliate here action 11 we cut a promo for him and you were brilliant Pat. Just it, only brilliant. Took, it only took 30 or 40 minutes very nice people well a three-point field goal and Texas now leading by seven toward the kickoff Miller back deep. And he won't bring that one out. 
Again, both teams getting very good kickoffs from Hahn and Jeff Ward. At the 20, Arkansas will have it. Now you mentioned at the 20, one more time, Arkansas has to go 80 yards to get on the scoreboard. I would say that Arkansas feels like they came out of that last series pretty well after giving up a 56-yard completion and hanging on and allowing only the field goal. But isn't it interesting, we talked about Brad Taylor, how he is a big play guy with a strong right arm, but it's been Rob Morrishaw as a passer that's really been the difference of the game. For the second time in this game, Arkansas trails by seven. Taylor to Bobby Joe Edmonds. Oh, nothing going there. 53 is Mark Lane out of Ira and Texas. Second down, virtually 10. Edmonds comes out. Billy Warren replaces him. What do they have? 44 yards rushing in the first half. It's just so tough to run against this Texas team. Now they're only giving up 179 yards a game in total offense. Averaging 1.8 attempts. down but Fred Acorn 17 fine open field tackle Acorn from Rotan Texas that's the home of Sammy Ball oh now this is a surprise West Virginia is added to their advantage Georgia Tech that would that's the second oldest rivalry in the south Georgia Auburn is the oldest Michigan Defending on the play, Luther Franklin was the tight end, the intended receiver. Brad Taylor, this pass was almost intercepted, as you mentioned, Gary. Again, pretty good protection. He's looking downfield. He winds up. He's trying to get the ball to his tight end, but he is well covered. That ball should not have been thrown. Poor decision by Brad Taylor. Offense is going to get a crack at it again. Taylor will kick. He hit another beauty. That is a picturesque spiraling kick from the 21-yard line. Fields. He'll be dropped at the 33. 53-yarder. 12-yard return. Texas in possession of the ball and a seven-point lead. Almost 55,000 on hand for this key Southwest Conference battle. Fred Akers, Texas Longhorns, rank number two against the Razorbacks of Arkansas. They have a first down at the 32-yard line and get a yard on that play. Mike Luck carrying the football. Lou Holt, the innovator, the man who is so ingenious with what he's able to do. But this game has been a game that has not gone the way most people expected. Lou Holtz has not been able to really to solve the puzzle. He's tried a lot of different things. He's tried options. He's tried passes. He's tried rollouts. He's tried draw plays. But it has not been able to get six points. He's got one field goal, but he needs to get a touchdown and ball into the end zone. Arkansas thought they'd have the big plays. It's been Texas on two passes. Give the luck again. 56-yarder that set up the last field goal. A 54-yard touchdown pass in the first quarter. Again, we mentioned Rob Morrishaw. Kind of a guy you wouldn't expect to throw, make the big play throwing the football. But think of these Texas quarterbacks, the Robert Brewers, the Marty Aikens, Alan Lowry, the James Streets. They, they, they're the typical type of Texas quarterback. They're winners. And that's what Rob Morrishaw is showing us a little bit more of today. Another third down, and in this game, Texas is 5 of 12 on third down. Third and four. Castleberry, number 46. He's a former Oklahoma player. And he reached in and batted it away. You're going to get a look at Mike Castleberry as he stirs up the crowd. Now it's going to be a pass. It's third and four, remember, just trying to get the completion to pick up the first down. But right there, 46 Castleberry knocks the ball away, gets the crowd excited, and maybe, perhaps, will give his offense some momentum. Well, two fine defensive plays. Zinnemann in the end zone, and this one has kept Arkansas close. Telshik kicking. I'm going to get away from it. Whoa, Arkansas almost made some contact with that ball. That was Chivas throwing a block and almost made contact with the ball. 39-yard punt. Tomorrow, an NFL doubleheader. 
How's this for some outstanding action? San Francisco against New Orleans. And in the doubleheader game, it'll be the Atlanta Falcons against the Rams, who are tied with the 49ers, and the Saints with the division lead. All starting with the NFL today. And this crowd is starting. They are fired up. First down at the 23. Derek Thomas. Crowd here not uh, too happy about that particular call. Well, that's just it. When you have the crowd starting to root for you and cheer for you like they were when they had the possession, you have to, you need to do something, to do something positive to keep them on your side. They're not happy with the play selection right now. Derek Thomas will leave the ball game. Miller has replaced him. Oh, Harvard having another long afternoon. <laughs> no surprise there. Second down nine, Taylor to Edmonds. Again, you better be ready to cover up when you're going after the football because Ty Allard was over there. And very quickly, it's third down. And Arkansas has not been successful on third down. They're two of ten. Oklahoma was only one of 13 last week on third down. Remarkable defense this Texas team has. Well, we saw the Auburn game. We carried it on CBS. They held them to a 54 yards rushing in the first half. Oklahoma this week. They're doing a good job against the Razorbacks. Taylor. That's going to be intercepted. Mossy Cade, who was frustrated in the first half, has the better of that one. is happy to have his players play aggressively and if, if there were some penalties like there were in the first half he doesn't mind if this what's happened as Mossy Cade steps in front of Missler for the interception like we said it's an aggressive defense watch the coverage here at the top of the screen there Mossy Cade number three read the pattern all the way he was not fooled you cannot test him too often an all-american defensive back makes a tremendous interception that's Taylor's second interception of the year Gets a couple of yards. Gentleman on the stop. Cade now has three interceptions. He made a big one last week against Oklahoma. It's interesting, though, that Lou Holtz decided to pick on Cade in the entire first half. He came out in the second half, started picking on him again. There were some adjustments made there. Bossy Cade knew that Missler was going to run that out route. He read it the entire way, was there. He looked like he was the intended receiver. Second down, a long seven for the Longhorn. 7.57 to go, third quarter. Marshall gives to Luck. Luck, he's to the 15 and slips to the 10. They'll advance it to the 9. Mike Luck with a burst outside that time. Nobody out tucks this man, according to Fred Akers. And you have to watch, uh, enjoy the way he watches. He picks up his blocks and he picks a hole. He's an intelligent runner. He watches his receivers downfield. He followed the guards, block, the guards block. Watch number seven, Brent Duhon, the receiver. Everybody contributes on this Texas team. You're going to see him try to contribute for his back, Mike Luck. 13-yard pickup, first down, first and goal inside the 10. Luck again, but wait a minute. Fly. Boy, Luck's having a tough time staying on his feet, isn't he? Slipped again. There's the man, the interceptor. The pros are drooling over that guy. You gonna have a delay a game? Remember last time Texas was down here, they were on the two-yard line and had that penalty as well. Dead ball, false start. Was not Still a delay. It's false start. You're right, though, Pat. The last time they had to settle for the field goal because of the penalty. First down, 14. Arkansas would like to build it and hold right here. Elbow Bryant in motion. Hand off to Bobby Mitchell, the tight end. A new wrinkle. Bobby Mitchell advances it to close to the eight yard line. An interesting call by Fred Akers, and he's adjusting as well. Watch him. We've seen the ball run off tackle with a fullback this time. He fakes the fullback, gives to his tight end, Bobby Mitchell, who has not carried the ball all season long. But when you get in the Southwest Conference, expect some new looks. You do anything you can do, you scratch and claw to win this football game. Second and eight. Yeah. 
inside the five. Zinneman and King combine on the stop. And it's going to move to a third down. This is a real check now defensively for Arkansas. Can they do it? They held the last time and made him kick the field goal. And right now, Texas is called timeout. The Longhorns have used their first timeout. 6.34 left in this third quarter. It's gut check time now for the Arkansas defense. It's third down goal from the three. And during that last break, the timeout, the defense went off the side of the field to talk to defensive coordinator Don Lindsay. Here we go. Urban Davis in with Mike Luck. Urban Davis. They have not given him the touchdown. The Texas Longhorn signaled that. The officials are not. They are short. You mentioned it's gut, gut check time. There's power football by the Texas offensive team right off the left side. They give it to Irvin Davis. He's their designated touchdown scorer, but he didn't quite get in this time. At least that's the way the official sees it. Here they go. Fourth and goal. Davis will lock again in the backfield. Touchdowns last year, as you mentioned, the designated score, and he gets a big one here. tail of Nebraska as far as the number one ranking is concerned now has a 17 to 3 lead this touchdown really was set up by the interception of Mossy Cade you can watch Irvin Davis right here coming off the left side over Casey Smith and there he is in for the touchdown but really Mossy Cade set this up it made it a very short field it was only a 25 yard drive Lou Holtz was, didn't want his team to self-destruct and that's exactly what's happened here Louis Buck, the hogs and the horns Star State of Texas. And they are mighty proud of their Longhorns. It's interesting that Pat O'Brien on the pregame show, when he talked about the Lone Star, though, this Texas team doesn't have a star. They play as a team. They played as a team today and all season. Texas now, after the last score, has outscored their opponents in the third quarter. 59 to 3. You think they've owned this quarter? We have a new man back, Donnie Centers, a freshman, and he'll not return the kickoff. At the 20 yard line, that's where Arkansas will have it. At the conclusion of today's game, Pat and I will be selecting a Chevrolet MVP from each of the teams. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. The MVP receives a certificate from Chevrolet acknowledging his outstanding performance. Brad Taylor has to get something going. He really does. He has to get the ball downfield to his wide receivers. Arkansas in the third quarter possessions, they've had three possessions. They had three plays and punted, had three plays and punted, had three plays and an interception. Total yards, you saw that as well. It's up to Brad Taylor. 5.55 left in the third quarter. Taylor, Metzler, they had that completion earlier, but not this time. Second and ten. You can see this Texas defense playing with more and more confidence. Now, they were awful, awfully confident coming into the football game, but you can see as they're having more success against Brad Taylor, and Brad Taylor has not hit a pass in a while, that they've been growing even more confident. Boy, that is a shock. Tom Reed of North Carolina State playing host to the Tar Heels, who are unbeaten right third. They're 6-0 going into that game. Oh, that is a stunner. Second and 10. Taylor going deep. Now Lou 
Luther Franklin, the intended receiver, he was mixed up. Peavy was defending, and he just pulled up short. Luther Franklin was not ever even looking for the, for the ball, and that's a mistake. Any receiver who goes downfield and is not looking for the ball is not doing his job. We talked about man-to-man -man coverage. Watch this bump and run by 17, Fred Acorn. You think that 83 Keith Kidd is open? No wonder Brad Taylor hasn't completed too many passes here in the third quarter. They have some athletes back there. Taylor now, 7 of 16, 67 yards, one interception. Oh, he almost falls down. And he's in trouble. That's the second sack of the day. John Haynes, all six foot seven of him was there. Here's a man they think should really blossom in his senior year. Fred Akers calls him a difference maker. Dominant football player. Out of Fort Worth. And now Taylor will have to kick again, and Arkansas has just not gotten anything together in the second half. Not too many people have against this Texas defense. Snapping the ball will be 54, Greg Garrison. They think he's just superb. He's only had one bad snap in two and a half years. Taylor averaging 49 yards a kick. You know, you wonder when you get chased down and sacked like that, Pat, how quickly you can make the transition to punt the ball. A lot of people don't want their, co uh, their quarterbacks punting or holding for field goals for that very reason, because they feel a quarterback might be upset or disappointed with the way he's played, and they don't want to put him in a position after having made a bad play of having to punt or hold for a field goal. Lou Holtz doesn't feel that way. Taylor. This is Feld again, the short man on the fair catch at the 43. Take this opportunity now to look at that score. Now, wait a minute. Hold the phone a minute. We had that earlier, North Carolina State leading. Oh, that was our right a moment ago. Okay. That's as expected. The Tar Heels leading. Well, we were all excited up here. Okay, now West Virginia. Virginia Tech's been tough defensively this year. And that is correct. Georgia Tech leading Auburn. Illinois, Ohio State, and that has not been a very high scoring affair, has it? Mike White. At the 43. The Texas end of the field. The Longhorn Temple. Orchell's going to air it out. Wide open down there for a moment. Duhon. Did he get it? have come from Texas. And Jeff Ward now has moved this count to 24 to 3. Another big play by Rob Warshaw as he throws down to Brent Duhon, number 7. Now watch him leap. He is only 5'11". Lasker is 6'1". He jumps over the top of him. He has possession. No, it looks like Lasker tried to pull the ball away from Duhon there. Another look. A wider angle, Greg Lasker, number three. Now, early in the catch here, it looks like Duhon has it. And then Lasker, from that angle, looked like he took it away from Duhon. One more look. The entire football play as Rob Morrishow again comes up with a big play downfield. He was open, as you can see, Duhon, but Lasker, the free safety, comes over. Duhon makes the catch, but it looked like to me that Lasker took it away from him. He might be a strong candidate. He being Brent Duhon for MVP. He has two catches for two touchdowns at 97 yards. It's amazing. He only had three catches coming into, into the game today, too. He would had a problem with the finger. Remember, his little finger was taped up. He's gotten rid of that. Maybe he's back to full steam. He's playing well today. There may be some question about that touchdown. Though. He said it last to look like he may have taken it away. We're going to look at it again and see if we can make a determination on it. Here at centers, he's going to have to get on that. Don't come out with it. He almost did. Let's take one more look at Brent Duhon in this uh, catch. It was ruled a touchdown. Duhon, as I said, a nice leap. He's watching the ball the entire way. The defensive back cannot see it. You're going to see him jump up right here. 
over Lasker. Looks like he has the ball there, but then number three, Lasker takes the ball away from it. Looked like an interception to me. I believe it was an interception. The tie goes to the receiver. <laughs> I'm not sure it was a tie. <laughs> but Duhon might come up here and argue with it. From the 20-yard line now. Arkansas to Bobby Joe Edmonds. He breaks out of there. First down to the 36. Gray and Lining combining on the tackle. A look from the ground of Bobby Joe Edmonds. They need to get something going here. They hand the ball off to Edmonds. Picks up a big first down, but they need to get the ball downfield and score some points quickly. That was the longest run on the ground for Arkansas. That time by Bobby Joe Edmonds. Taylor. That was Donnie Centers. Freshman out of Longview, Texas. Fred Ed Corn defended. Brad Taylor can really wing it. You can look, take a look at Donnie Centers, number 85, as he runs a crossing route against that man-to-man -man coverage. But watch how these defenders close on the ball. It looks like he has a beat, but Fred Acorn closes on him. That ball should have been caught there, although Taylor put a lot of steam on that football. The two freshmen, uh, Shebest and Centers, they figure will be their wide receivers the next three years. As Metzler and Kidd are seniors. Taylor back. Defending, that might give Arkansas new life. Gets them out of that bad field position. We saw earlier in the game how these receivers ran crossing routes. He's going to set it up. It looks like he's running a crossing route, but then he runs back outside, and Fred Acorn was, thought he was going to go entirely across the football field, and Brad Taylor gets the ball to Keith Kidd. A nice play by Keith Kidd. That's Kidd's first catch of the day. At the 48, Arkansas has it first down. Billy Warren and Derek Thomas in the backfield. This is Warren. And Warren fights for another yard. He gets three total. They thought this guy might be their answer at tailback. Heavily recruited out of Newport, Arkansas. Injured last year and redshirted. Now, Iowa's come back up to trailer. Illinois had it three. Iowa State. Alabama playing against Tennessee. Oh, that game was, uh, I would say, a clinic by Utah. Taylor. That's Mitzler. Cade defending on the play. Boy, Mossy Cade has been all over the place. Mostly all over the receivers. <laughs> a couple of times illegal. <laughs> But like I say, you don't want to take away from that aggressiveness. They've gotten here playing aggressive defense, Mossy Cade and Jerry Gray and those people. You're going to have to look long and hard to find a better defensive secondary in college football than the one Texas has now, right now. What makes them so good, too, is the front seven, how much pressure they can put on the quarterback. Third down, seven. Come on, Ed! Taylor completes to Edmonds, and that'll be a first down. And that's only the third time they've converted on third down. It was a big rush on Brad Taylor. We told you that's one of the reasons Texas is so successful defensively. Taylor throws it off his back foot, but Bobby Joe Evans had slipped out of the backfield in front of Richard Peavy, the strong safety for the catch and the first down. The drive is still on. At the 39 of Texas, first down. Kid, Missler, split out. Three minutes left in the third quarter. Oh, movement. Warren moved after the Longhorn move, but the defensive side could get back. Offensively, that would be encroachment or illegal procedure. <laughs> this crew from the Southwest Conference, a couple of men from Beaumont, Texas, one here from Little Rock, one from Garland, Texas, and this man, Joe Thomas, from Wilberton, Oklahoma. against Texas. It's the ninth penalty against Texas for 58 yards. They are aggressive. From the 34, first and five. Rod Ford is checked in with Shebest. Down. Edmonds 
faces him. Line of scrimmage, the 17. Arkansas, impressive drive here in the third quarter. Taylor to Warren, and as he hit, that is Ed Williams, number 83. Very gifted football player. That backs him out to the 21-yard line. Somehow he just knew that Lou Holtz was going to find a way to make this a football game. He's too good an offensive mind. Well, he's tried everything. You said that earlier. He's probed, he's tested, he's altered, and he's tried to do everything he can against the top-ranked defensive team in the country. Kid and Metzler in on a second and 15. Defending on the play back deep was Jitter Fields on Mitzler. But Taylor showing good speed, running away that time for the linebacker. You, bet you, you better believe most quarterbacks would run pretty fast when you have June James chasing you. He's 6'3", 222 pounds. He shows some pretty good speed as well. What a little fright can do for you. <laughs> Are you speaking from experience? <laughs> Third and 15. This is the 10th play of this drive. Started from the 20-yard line. that far. You're still thinking of winning this football game. With 121 to go. Third quarter. This will be a 38 yard attempt. Horn gets this one on the way. No good. So Greg Horn misses from 38 yards away. And Texas maintains the 24 to 3 lead. And the question now is, just how good is this Texas football team? I'll tell you what, though, missing the field goal, though, really does take some air out of Arkansas's balloon. They finally get something going. They drive down the field, only to come away with nothing. Perhaps this Texas team is very, very good. Well, now, this is really another one of those areas you call a stunner. Look at that. Wake Forest is leading Maryland. Maryland with only one loss this year. They've got a good quarterback in Boomer Esiason, and though they can bring them back. Maryland lost to West Virginia. So the miss from 38 yards. Setting it up at the 21 is Texas. And all kinds of mix-ups. Ron Faroe back there defensively. We have another upset, we understand, and we're going to put it up, and Georgia Tech, they've won one under Bill Curry. Boy, if they'd hang on against Auburn, that would be something for the Yellow Jackets. Auburn's only scored seven points, but they can really have the potential of scoring a lot. And Illinois has still shut out the Buckeyes, and in the Big Ten, you don't do that very often. Lou Holtz. His team down here, 24 to 3. Last 30 seconds of the third quarter. Oh, all kinds of mix up. Somebody pulled before the ball was snapped. That somebody was John Stewart, 78, offensive tackle. I understand now the Hawkeyes of Iowa have taken the lead against the Boilermakers of Purdue. There it is, 17 14. Tell you, Iowa, Illinois, Ohio State, and Michigan. What a finish that's going to be in the Big Ten. That was the 10th penalty assessed against Texas. That matches their season average, an average they're not too pleased with, I'm sure. That's about the only thing you can fall them in. You know, it's amazing that they are able to overcome 10 penalties, 11 fumbles I mentioned earlier in the game, and still dominate teams like they have. 14 seconds to go in this third quarter. Duhon, is that a big day along with that split out? Warshaw <laughs> giving chase. And that is completed the 41-yard line to Epps. Nice play by...
by Morshell under real duress. He just six yards completion. He just keeps doing it again. A very difficult throw as he's rolling out to his left, and he's getting chased from behind. You can see that Perot throws it to his left, but he got his shoulders turned, and that was the key to that pass. Drilled the ball there to Epps for the first down. And that's the end of the third quarter. Our score 24 to 3 in favor of Texas. Texas, Arkansas is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. Gary Bender, Pat Hayden. We start the fourth quarter. The ball at the 40-yard line. Texas has it first down, and they lead it 24 to 3. Rob Morshell, who just completed a remarkable pass, going to Bill Boy Bryant. And defending was Greg Gaston. That'll bring it back, second and 10. I don't know if you've been noticing, but on the jerseys of the Texas Longhorns, we'll take a look at it as you look at this, they have a centennial patch. There it is. That's in recognition of the University of Texas centennial year. Texas is in the closing stages of a year-long celebration recognizing the school's 100th birthday. That's the tower that you see if you visit the campus there in Austin. Second and ten. is Epps. Pitch to luck. Luck to the 45, maybe the 46-yard line. Understand Georgia Tech is continuing in that upset mode. 13 to 7 now. You talked about Rob Morshell when we look at some other scores here. Syracuse over Penn State. Rob Morshell on his pass completions, they've averaged 36 yards of completion. Well, he had the 54-yard touchdown strike, and he came back and hit another 43-yarder. That helps your average, doesn't it? Well, we're going to stop action now. We're going to have a timeout. Timeout called by Arkansas. 14-21 left in the game. The Longhorns are on their way to another win. Number 60 at Texas. You're looking at Jeff Lighting. You might recall a few years ago on one of those national championship teams, Tommy Novus, the All-American, won it. Quite a story. When they came to recruit him. Red Acre said, I'm going to let you wear number 60, Tommy Novus' number, and the kid was so overwhelmed by that thought that he lived up to it. He played well. Third down, four after that timeout. Luck has the first down, Rod and Moore. He's going all the way. Touchdown, Texas. for the day. <laughs> Jeff Ward, a point after attempt. He gets it up high, doesn't he? And Texas. Now leads it 31 to 3. As the game has gone on and on, Texas has played better and better and with more and more confidence. Watch Mike Luck as he follows his block of once again of Casey Smith, Kirkman Junkin, Doug Dawson. We said Edwin Simmons perhaps. We're going to miss him, the, the, uh, the home run hitter. We watched Mike Luck here. He went, made a big run there for the touchdown. Maybe they've had another home run hitter in Mike Luck. I don't think Mike Luck has had a better day than he's had today. He's had some big plays, but putting it all together. I'm going to ask you this question again. <laughs> How good is Texas? I'll try to answer it this time. <laughs> I think Texas is an exceptionally good football team. What really impresses you about Texas is their defense. They put so much pressure on you. And also their special team. They have backed Arkansas up all day long, make Arkansas go the long way. And also, let's not forget Rob Morrishow. Now, there are people who are doubted that he couldn't throw the ball well, but he's come up with some big, big passing plays. And the defense, not only did they seemingly get in position, Pat, but they just come out and knock you around. They beat you up a little bit. Yeah. Ward. Ward kicking off. Here's Miller. of running around out there, gets it out to the 23. Now Wake 
are still leading. That's in the fourth quarter. 26 to 21. Oklahoma State Ooh, leading Oklahoma. And you saw in our pregame show the story of Marcus Dupree. You wonder how much of a distraction that might be. Oklahoma has some problems. They definitely do. The line of scrimmage to 23. Arkansas would like to salve some wounds and just get on the scoreboard with a touchdown. Centers and Ford are now in at wide receivers. Matt Taylor. That's intended for Franklin to tie it in, underthrown. Brad Taylor might be a little numb by this point. He's been under pressure, under duress all afternoon. That, that time, Luther Franklin was open and the ball was underthrown. Well, in all fairness to this Arkansas team, they're playing really only five seniors, starting 11 sophomores. And they figure in the next two, three years, that experience will start to do some things for them. They lost eight all-Southwest Conference performers off of last year's team. Two consensus All-Americans. Taylor again, he comes right back to Franklin, and he picks up the first down, or check that, not a first down. He's going to be about the 29-yard line, and that was Mossy Cade that really hit him. Mossy Cade really hit him on that touch. So you want to play in the Southwest Conference. Here's what you have to take. You have to take shots like that from Mossy Cade number three. Remember, Luther Franklin's a tight end. He weighs 220 pounds, but Mossy Cade pats him on the head and says, better luck next year. Lou Holtz feels that Cade is the finest defensive back that Texas has ever had, and that's saying something. I'm not going to argue with him. Third down, three. Edmonds in motion. Gets away from Ty Allen. That's Tony Edwards. There's a penalty flag. We may have tackling by face mask. Tony Edwards out of St. Louis, St. Louis University High School. Ian Lighting give him some depth at that middle linebacking spot. Brad Taylor as he tries to put himself back together, but here you're going to see the face mask on Brad Taylor. There's 63. Tony Edwards coming right into the screen. Clearly he has him by the face mask. Good call by the official. Oh boy, you can get hurt doing that. Personal foul. Face mask. Automatic first down. Saw a quarterback recently, Kenny Anderson, the Cincinnati Bengals, face a similar type of situation really did hurt himself and that's why it's such a serious infraction in college football as well statistically they dominate on the scoreboard and in about every department one area they dominate in is penalties too they have 11 Taylor back on a first down not sure who that was going to but Taylor getting up he is shaken up on the play he got hit hard Ray Woodward, number 70, a tackle. And Blake Bronner were there. Scott Reed is going to come in and replace Taylor. And so Brad Taylor hit 11 of 25 for 114 yards. One interception leaves the game. Under a great deal of pressure, particularly the second half. So Reed, who played on that one series in the first half, a senior, will come in at quarterback on the option, pitches to Edmonds. And Edmonds fighting. Does he going to get it? He's about a half yard short of the first down. Heathcock and Peavy combining on the stop. There's Taylor. Bill Heathcock and Ty Remember, he is the punter as well. If he can't kick, Greg Horn, who's the place kicker, would come in and replace him as the punter. Boy, you hate to see the trainers looking at any player's knee. Arkansas is home next week in Fayetteville against Houston. Third down, less than a yard. And Scott Reed's got it, stays on his feet for another yard. Mark Lang made the stop. that much. Brad Taylor said that what he has done, he, through his experience of been around, has helped him. He's given him a positive look at things. He's been on the scout team for three years. This is his first chance to really see any action his senior year.
different type of quarterback than Brad Taylor is. It's throwing Texas defense a little bit off rhythm. We saw Brad Taylor primarily a drop back thrower. You've seen Scott Reed, as you mentioned earlier, an option runner. He was very successful on that option run. First down, just inside the 25. This is Marshall Foreman, a freshman out of Houston. He'll advance to the 21 yard line. Lou Holtz changed from the beer. He changed it really in the Blue Bonnet Bowl, and they beat Florida. He got a lot of his mechanical information, X's and O's, from Tom Osborne in Nebraska. Blew up and visited with, with the, the seven, Nebraska mentor. Went to Southern Cal as well, but he hasn't found the dominant tailback like those schools have. You got to recruit it when you go to the eye. Second and seven. Reed again on the option, the flag on the play, and he cuts it inside to the 12-yard line. Made the stop, but the penalty flag back at the 30-yard line. He's getting the flow going one way, and he's cutting against the grain, and it's really working. Well, this Texas defense is so quick and pursues so quickly that you, if you can cut back as Tom Reed or Scott Reed has the past couple of plays, you can pick up some big yardage. Personal foul against Texas. So Scott Reed has come in here and kind of ignited this team. There, Ohio State finally scoring. Iowa now has a little breathing room in that game. Personal foul, defense, automatic first down. So it's first and goal now at the seventh. Missler split out. Warren and Thomas. All four of those guys are freshmen. Hit on this series. Reed. Billy Warren with the ball. He's just about to the five-yard line. Richard Peavy. Safety up to make the tackle for Texas. It'll be second and goal from there. Scott Reed just entered the football game, but he's actually Arkansas's leading rusher now with five carries for 37 yards. That tells you the kind of defense the Texas has played all afternoon. They may remain number one in rushing defense. Two tight ends, Franklin and Schoolcraft, come in for Arkansas. Mitzler goes in motion. A give. Joe Edmonds with Woodward making the tackle. It'll be third and goal, and they're going to have it just outside the two, almost to the three-yard line. It's Texas defense, it's pride. They don't want that goal line cross. They've given up only a field goal. Talk about this being a game of winners. Two teams with rich tradition. in motion. Give to Edmonds. He's short. He tried to leap and he was hit by Tony Edwards in midair. Fourth down. From the side, you're going to see the ball handed deep. Bobby Joe Edmonds tries to jump over the top. His feet are grabbed and he just couldn't get enough up in the air to get over the goal line. And so it's fourth and goal at the one, actually inside the one yard line. Arkansas, they won six points. They trail 31 to three. Reed to Edmonds. And he did not get in. And look at those te Texas defenders. They are happy about stopping them again. The pride and poise of this entire Texas team, the whole program, starting with Fred Akers. One more look. As you mentioned, Gary, they do not want to give up a touchdown. You can see the penetration. Tony Edwards is in there. John Haynes, Ed Williams, PV. You see Holly, he was just separating people up there. Right there. No way, no room for Bobby Joe Edmonds. And they're going to take that defense with them next week to Dallas and SMU. Texas made their stand, and they held on a fourth and goal. They take over at about the two-inch line. Rob Morshell comes out of there. David Dudley made the stop. 
And the second rank Longhorns have done it all today. The big plays, the intimidation defensively. Rob Morshell, the big passes to Brent Duhon. And look at this. Oklahoma State, who just really gave Nebraska all they wanted, now beating Oklahoma. Iowa now with that 10-point advantage. Indiana leading Michigan State. Irvin Davis, John Walker, the running back behind Morshell. He picked up seven yards on that play. Second and three. Here's Davis. Davis bounces across the 15. Gets up and runs some more. It was Dudley again making the tackle for Arkansas. Irvin Davis, who does impressionists of people. Penn State. That's in the fourth quarter, by the way, against Syracuse. Well, Penn State scored a lot of points last week. Big play team last week, not, not today. As this game has worn on, we have seen the dominance of the Texas offensive line and defensive line. They have really controlled the line. Oh, That's the key still today in college football. Get the ball. Rick McIver now has come in replacing Morshell at quarterback. McIver, the senior from Fort Stockton, Texas, and they're going to stop at the flag. Delay a game. They change quarterbacks and take too long to get the playoff. So Rick McIver coming in. They've had Morshell, Todd Dodge was in briefly, and now the third quarterback, Rick McIver. Morshell left with six for 15, 216 yards, two touchdowns. The six completions were all pretty big ones. Bill Boy Bryant goes out of the game. Epps comes in to replace him. First down now, 15 for Texas. After the five-yard penalty, seven and a half minutes to go in this one. John Walker. And Walker has a big run out across the 20, out to the 23-yard line. Kevin Wyatt eventually was able to knock him down. It'll bring up second down. John Walker, due to the injury to Edwin Simmons today, seeing a lot of playing time, he was the number one man at the start of the year. Out of Colleen, Texas. Bryant comes back in. He's split up to the bottom of the screen. It's second down. Let's make it seven. The short man, Davis. Irvin Davis. It'll bring up a third down now. Still five. Castleberry made the stop. North Carolina now... Starting to pound the Wolfpack, Tennessee, Alabama. Boy, that's been a big win. Remember, Tennessee upset them a year ago. Lou Holtz, seventh year as the coach, Arkansas. Fred Akers, likewise. They've had some outstanding games, but Lou Holtz is having a long afternoon today. McIver on a third and five. The intended receiver and Gatson defending. McIver has a strong arm. They really have three different type of quarterbacks. I was exactly going to say that. Rick McIver is the big, tall, strong receiver. Moore Shell is a steady kind of player. Todd Dodge is a, a good runner and a good thrower. They started out with question marks at that spot, and now they find themselves with three guys who can play. Telshik will kick. 47.3 average for the afternoon. Welcome to Little Rock, Arkansas. This is Bobby Joe Edmonds of the Razorbacks returning to punt, moving it out to the 45-yard line. I'm Gary Bender along with Pat Hayden. And the sellout crowd has watched the second-ranked Texas Longhorns convert big pass plays and a rock-hard defense to lead it 31-3. to here, here was our first. Here was our first touchdown. It was a day of big passing plays. You, as you watch Rob Morshell drop back and find his split end, Brent Duhon, number seven. Now, the defensive back, Kevin Wyatt, had slipped and fallen down. Duhon went untouched into the end zone for six. A new quarterback now has come in for Arkansas. Mark Calcagni is in. He gets to a freshman fullback, Gary Thomas. Now the second touchdown pass, a little controversy. Once more, Morshell is going to go to Brent Duhon. Now he is a junior. He's 5'11", 
He's 167 pounds, but you're going to see him try to go up and out leap the free safety, Greg Lasker, number three. Now, it looks like Duon has the ball there, but then I thought Greg Lasker, the free safety, pulled it away. However, the officials disagreed with me and ruled it a touchdown. And just moments ago, Texas made a goal line stand at the one-yard line on fourth down. Their defense, the number one ranked defense in the country, played up to that level this afternoon. At the 50-yard line, no gain on that play. Fred Akers, this is his 100th game as a coach. He had one year at Wyoming, the rest to Texas. Lou Holtz, who is pro, he's adjusted. He's tried everything that he can possibly think of, but he hasn't been able to score a touchdown against Texas. 4.52 to go in the game. Cal Cagney delivers on target. That should be a first down. Well, we're going to see the Texas Longhorn next week as we'll be bringing you coast-to-coast -coast nationwide coverage of the game between the Longhorns and the unbeaten SMU Mustangs who have today off to get ready for that one. That will be from Irving, Texas Stadium. Coast to coast and nationwide. Does that mean we go everywhere in the country? I'm a little confused. Well, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, they see it in Los Angeles. Nathan <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jones, Arkansas, would like to get a touchdown out of this. But Texas, with great pride. And what a job they're going to have in store for them next week against SMU. All they have is a great running back by the name of Jeff Atkins, a freshman, a sophomore, Reggie Dupard, Lance McElhaney, who threw four touchdown passes in the last game. It's going to be a fun game to be a part of. Second down, 10. Now Cagney on an end around. Gives it to Donnie Centers. And Donnie Centers will be dropped very close to the first down. Fred Acorn coming up from the cornerback spot. And an interesting afternoon here as this Texas team making a strong bid to take over the number one ranking. We've had an upset in the making. We had some scores that were really surprising. Of course, Harvard is not really surprising, is it? Our producer, Rick Lasavita, is a little upset with that in the truck. We're going to have to get him back and get some eligibility. <laughs> <laughs> He's eating so much, I think he might play in the offensive line. He'd be a tackle. <laughs> Third down, less than a yard. Giving off to Marshall Foreman, and Foreman has the first down. Wait. Now picking up the ball was Jerry Gray. Was it a fumble? And it is. Texas has it. He recovers. Let's look at this. Lou Holt said today if his team didn't self-destruct, they would be in this ball game. Well, they have self-destructed. They've thrown interceptions. They've thrown some fumbles. Here's one right here. Excuse me. Fumbled the ball, not thrown them. And there's a the fumble. Jerry Gray, number two, recovers it. So Texas has it again. They'll have it at the 24. The Longhorns are really moving. <laughs> a very happy Jerry Gray. He is. He is. We saw him play so well against Auburn. Today he had an interception, but he got it by penalty, so he had to turn it loose. But he's played well, has the entire secondary for Texas. John Walker, carrying Mike Castleberry. We might indicate the freshman running sensation for Texas for those of you who joined us from the West Virginia game. Edwin Simmons was hurt. He's showered. He's been on the sideline. And they're just hoping he's ready for that SMU game, which we'll be bringing you next week. Two more outstanding freshman tailbacks playing next week. Hopefully, Simmons, oh, as you mentioned, will be back. The Texas Longhorns oh, with a 4-0 record, trying to make it 5-0. The pitch comes back to Michael Brown. Brown, a senior out of Dallas. And there's that defensive team. Top-ranked defensive team in the country. And they have some fun, as you can tell. It's a little easier to have some fun when you're ahead 31 to 3. <laughs> well, I can't understand a word they said, but you're right. And I was very impressed with Akers before they left the stadium yesterday. He said, I want you guys to focus on one thing, and that's what's happening out on the field. Don't pay any attention to this crowd. Enthusiasm. They got over the big Oklahoma win, it seems like, and they came up with a big offensive performance again against Arkansas. Two big wins, and they have another tough chore next Saturday. Brown again carrying, as you see, two minutes left in this record. So Texas, after they came into the state in 79 and 81 unbeaten, and only to lose, changed things today. And now Auburn has come from behind in the fourth quarter to take a one-point lead. It is the official time to measure. 
Rovers from back east. Texas has now brought in their fourth quarterback of the day, Danny Akers, Fred's son. As they make the measurement. This crowd, which is probably as vocal as any crowd in America, has not had a lot to talk and yell about in the second half. The last time you could get a ticket to this game was 1977. It is short of a first down by six inches. All right, Dave. Arkansas had that week off after beating TCU. They hope to come up with a wrinkle or two. Uh, that defense of Texas, they didn't bite. They just do not have the personnel that Texas do does when it comes down to it. You have to have the horses. Arkansas has not had them. Now, they may be a year away. This Arkansas team is a very young team. Fred Akers' team, as you see Fred there, his team is a very experienced team, a veteran team. Well, he came back with eight starters on defense. Telchik will be kicking to Bobby Joe Edmonds with a minute 40 left in the game. And he hit a beautiful kick. You can't kick a ball any better than that, and it's going to go into the end zone for the touchback. Arkansas will have it. The Razorbacks trail 31-3. A disappointed Brad Taylor on the sidelines now. He'll get ready next week for Houston and Fayetteville. Quarterback is Cal Cagney, and he pitches it off to Terry Tatum, and Tatum brings it out to the 32. We want to take this opportunity to thank Arkansas Athletic Director Frank Broyles and head football coach Lou Holtz and his staff, along with Sports Information Director Rick Schaefer. And from Texas, Athletic Director the Los Dodds and head football coach Fred Akers and Sports Information Director Bill Little. Frank Broyle show was nice. We met with him the other day. Delightful man. After that first down run, it's to the 31. Tatum again. Tatum may get a yard, and that's all. Also, excellent job as usual by our statistician, Mike Swanson, and our spotter, Steve Bear. And we're glad to have as our director, Larry Cavallina. And I'll tell you something, Pat. Rick Lasavita's not a bad guy either, our producer. He does all right for himself. 40 seconds left in this one. Brent and Era will have an update on scores, and boy, what a game that is. They'll have some highlights coming up following this one. Cal Keck. Brother Ron played for Arkansas, and he just overthrew that one. Fort, Rod Fort, the defending player. Okay, our Chevrolet most valuable players. There's a flag, however, on this play. We're going to give it to two guys on Texas, Rob Morshell and Brent Duhon, who combined on those two touchdown passes, and Mark Mitzler, who did a fine job as a wide receiver for Arkansas. He ended up with four catches for 44 yards, and a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each college general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. There's Duhon. He had to go up in a wrestling match to get one. The other time, a guy fell down, and he took advantage of it. We've got to tell Chevrolet, though, that $1,000 just doesn't go toward college education like it used to, though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't mean as much. Duhon, by the way, had two catches for 97 yards. That's a pretty good average, isn't it? There is Mark Mitzler, his brother John, who plays for the Giants in the NFL. Boy, I'm looking forward to next week. Texas Stadium. Texas SMU. SMU 5-0, they had a week off. They'll be tuning everything up, getting ready for the invasion. Lance McElhaney, Rob Morshell were teammates in high school. They'll be going against each other. Morshell says he's a better thrower than McElhaney. <laughs> I don't know if Lance is going to appreciate that. They have another running back yet. John Ed Goodman that time carrying, and with 10 seconds, Texas. Putting away victory number five, and what disappointment. The second rank Longhorns continue their march to the national championship, the Southwest Conference crown, and a berth in the Cotton Bowl.